Okay, welcome to Magnum Debugging 101. Uh, in case you want to see this offline without the rush, we've got the slides online, including a transcript. So you can just scan this QR code and download the whole talk. With that being said, uh, we'll start and we'll display this QR code again at the end. So, welcome to Magnum Debugging 101. We're going to show you what happens when a Magnum cluster deployment goes wrong and what you can do about all the individual problems. You probably already know Magnum, so we'll skip the pre preliminaries and dive right in and tell you the story of a Magnum cluster being built and show you what goes wrong. The story, like many stories in our profession, starts with a user. That user operates a Magnum client, talks to the Magnum client API, and the first thing our user does is create a cluster template. That is a database object that holds all the metadata about the Magnum cluster, such as the container orchestration image uh, engine to use or the glance image to use. And that glance image can cause the first trouble already, if it doesn't have an OS distro attribute, Magnum will refuse to use it as part of that cluster template. Magnum uses that OS distro attribute to determine which driver to use to deploy an orchestration engine on there. So if you see this error message, set the OS distro attribute to an image type supported by Magnum and this error will go away. So let's assume this worked out now. Now our user is ready to create a cluster. That cluster references this cluster template where it, this is where the cluster gets all its metadata from. And the user sends the cluster creation request to the Magnum API and the Magnum API in turn sends a RabbitMQ message to the backend service Magnum conductor, which does the actual work. Magnum API is just a dumb front end service. And that communication can break down, either because Magnum conductor is not responding on the RabbitMQ message bus, or because RabbitMQ itself is broken. In either case, just ensure both services are running uh, the symptom of that problem will be the Magnum client hanging indefinitely and in some cases you may after a minute see this error message. If you see it, just make sure RabbitMQ and Magnum conductor are ship shape and this problem will go away. Once we are past that, Magnum conductor generates, well, generates a heat template but before it does that, it performs a few sanity checks one thing it also does, it obtains an etcd discovery URL from the etcd registry. By default, it uses the public etcd re registry and in an enterprise network that doesn't have access to the internet, you see this error message because uh, Magnum cannot access this etcd discovery URL. The solution for that is to either create an Lo a local etcd discovery service for your cloud to use or grant internet access to the cloud where Magnum is running. With that out of the way, we get to the heat template I just talked about. Magnum conductor generates a heat template describing the cluster and sends it to OpenStack heat which goes and does its thing, it creates Nova instances and all the plumbing to interconnect them, neutron networks, floating IPs, the works. And at that, that point, uh, we no longer get error messages from Magnum API. We need to poll the Magnum API to check our cluster status. And then we're interested in two fields, status and status reason. Status may be create failed, which indicates something went wrong and in st the status reason field, we'll find some sort of description that tells us what went wrong. If we get a failure er early on, about 30 seconds to a few minutes after, after cluster creation, depends on cluster size, 
we're dealing with one of with some sort of resource exhaustion problem from heat probably such as the ever popular no valid host was found which originates from nova or maybe somebody sent set some quotas too tight and in that case we'll see an early error message after just a couple of seconds once that is out of the way no, it's still on. Uh, once that is out of the way, we have our heat stack. Oh, okay. We have a couple of machines running. Um, so yeah, you have a few instances running at this point, and uh, they're running container-friendly operating systems. Currently, upstream, we support Fedora Atomic Core OS. Um, um, so yeah, then you obviously want to create some containers. Uh, in this environment, so um, you want to access the, you, you can just create, if you're running Kubernetes, you just create the containers. Um, at this point, there are, uh, you have the user data scripts, so Magnum creates cluster configs, which are run on every instance, and uh, if these fail, then you will run into one of the wait condition timeouts mostly because the user data scripts, the last script has, uh, it, it basically polls to the heat completion to the heat API, and if it fails to complete, then you will not get, um, you, you will get the wait condition timeout, and this is usually seen in the status reason field when the create cluster fails, uh, when something fails there. Um, then, um, yeah, so to debug this failure, you can, as the normal process, you first try to find the stack ID for heat. Uh, once you have the stack ID, you can grab through the um, stack resource list. This will give you which type of node has failed, so which type of node the error has occurred. It can either be the master or the minion nodes. Uh, once you have the node, you can just log into the node and check the logs. That uh, the log that you need to check is the val log cloud init output log. In this, you will, if you're lucky, in the first go, you'll find an error in the log directly. Um, if not, then it will always point to the script that has failed, and you can then add debug output and rerun the script. If that's not the case, uh, in some cases you have to uh, edit the source script and then recreate the cluster to see the more detailed error um, where it has failed. Um, so here we see the most common failure modes for wait condition timeout. So the first can be, um, there can be some network issue. The VM is not able to reach some of the external resource. Um, the ETCD and flannel is down, the service is down, or um, they're normally also, uh, if you're using self-signed certificates, you can see some problems due to that. Uh, second is that there are so many moving parts that um, there can always be that the script is expecting the ETCD or flannel to be running and it's accidentally down, so you need to um, check all of that, and lastly, there is a genuine timeout. Uh, so for every cluster creation, there is a default timeout of 60 minutes, but if you're on a larger cluster, then it can happen that it's, it, the timeout is too small, and you can just increase the timeout and then recreate the cluster. So uh, once you have all that in place, you have a cluster with um, Kubernetes running and you want to go ahead and run some containers on that. Um, so once you try to do that, uh, what I would do normally is that first log into the master node and run some basic commands like, for this is specific to Kubernetes, of course. Uh, so you run the kubectl version command, which will show you if the server and the client both are running. Um, the kubectl get nodes will fetch all the master minion nodes. And if this returns like no nodes, then you know that there is some connective co configuration issue. So you normally can check the configuration in slash etc Kubernetes. There are a bunch of files which you need to um, check. Uh, second is that once you're trying to create a pod, they can be stuck in creating state. And this normally happens also because some service is down. 
Another common reason that this happens is that the cluster user trust is not set to true. Um, this is needed when, while you create the pod, you're trying to access some OpenStack service. And um, this normally, uh, so if you're trying to set up a, a container with a Cinder volume backend, and the, in this case, you need the cluster user trust to be set to true so that uh, your cluster has the correct credentials to uh, access the OpenStack APIs. Uh, the third thing is that your pod is stuck in pending state. This normally, uh, so you, the pending state you can see when the Docker image is being pulled, but if this, it stays in the state for longer than it should, then you probably need to check the internet access on your minions because it's probably not able to pull the Docker image. And uh, lastly, if you have your pods deployed and your services deployed, um, but you can't reach the application. So there are, uh, in, when you're deploying a Magnum cluster, there's nested networking involved. So first thing, you should check the neutron networks. If your instances are able to ping each other, so your minions to the master and the minions to minions, if that's okay, then you check the interfaces and you check flannel. If flannel is not working, then it can happen that, uh, so Kubernetes provides a flat network for uh, the pods and the services. So if flannel is down, and flannel is the default network driver that is used, we also have Calico. But um, yeah, so um, if flannel is down, then you can have problems accessing a so application running in one of the clusters. Um, then if, if that's not the case, then one thing you can also do is that you can, you can just try to run a container using just a plain Docker. The, normally they're on the same subnet, so if you create a cluster using Kubernetes or Docker, it's, it's normally deployed in the same subnet, but it can happen that because the Kubernetes services, um, so you, kube proxy is involved, there are some IP table rules, which are added by Kubernetes, so this adds some extra hops, uh, which can cause some network issues and cause your application to be unreachable. So these are the few um, tips and tricks to um, check the network and check if everything's fine. Um, that's all for uh, this shorter version. If you have any questions, you can ask now. And uh, we also have a longer version of this, um, of this uh, presentation with the transcript. So um, yeah, initially this was supposed to be a longer session, so you can find all the details uh, in that with all the debugging commands and everything. Thank you. Thank you.